how were the uh, groupies in those days? Because you had a very uh, southern boys gimmick there that you'd think would appeal to the young ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's put it like this. Uh, everybody did. If you didn't, you'd been a damn queer. You know, and whatever. And you would have, I turned down a lot, but it did a lot. But, but uh, you know, you always hear that about the rats and all this and some then yeah it was wild and it was that dude but look a lot of times we, we would these girls you know, working girls a lot of them a lot of them had boyfriends and stuff dude they go get groceries for you they birthday presents bring food to the matches run errands for you come clean your apartment whatever stuff like that and, and, and some to this day that I know I'm still friends with them and it, guys yeah it, it didn't disrespect them and you didn't call them you didn't call them that and by no means you didn't, you didn't disrespect you know you didn't they bring their mom's dad stuff like that and do you you didn't do anything to hurt the business does that make sense yeah you know what i'm saying you know but yeah it was wild times and if you were we stayed over places a lot you know like in the big companies in the territories and all that and yeah. the areas like every two weeks you were out every week you stayed over and people come they get rooms and they bring money to the town you know and they'd spend money over you know, there at hotel restaurants and everything after parties then was the bar you know and a lot of times the gym and stuff would let you work out free just wear their shirt on interviews and plug the gym and everybody would and, and it, it really was and, and, and the police were real cool to you like, you know you, you just don't no trouble don't do, don't put them in a bad position it wasn't this you know like now yeah. you know and and and, do, and uh you know you just you just try to you know keep it in the middle of the road I guess you would say but but uh, yeah hey uh, I was always single so we would have like a talent sheet in a lot of different territories like like uh, Continental it's a, I had a big a tablet and it's official talent sheet Continental Championship Wrestling you know you had guys that were married had girlfriends and stuff you know whatever live in so they live together or whatever it may be I don't you know I have their number the girl's number whatever girls it did that because you know they don't get caught you know yeah, yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> girlfriend's number and stuff smoky mountain had talent sheet smoky mountain ecw and, and stuff and we'd have rules no romance and you know what i mean yeah. and stuff like no fence building and stuff we had it written on there and doing we'd have little courts somebody did and you know yeah. <laughs> and, and stuff but it's all good fun really was yeah and why do you think that doesn't exist as much today like it seems like most of the fans now are male well because they did one thing they disrespect them they talk and they call them trash them what the hell man i mean these are these are people some have children some are married some boyfriends and did yeah. and they're just like anyone that was their wild night out and and back then the boys were kind of like rock stars you yeah. know in bars and stuff you were singled out and we plugged the bar plugged the gym on interviews and stuff and and, and the best one at it ever was rick flair Ric Flair, yeah, oh man, he, he'd come and hand out uh, shirts to guys. Hey, plug this gym. This is my buddy. This is on your interviews. Just plug this bar right there and that and do blah, blah, blah. But they'd make people come to the matches. And and, and Rick Crockett uh, would give him, uh, and obviously W might have too, a little uh, 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 a spending account kind of to spend. He'd walk around with trays of shooters, and he'd be the first one in the gym doing Stairmaster an hour and a thousand squats. And I mean, man, it was amazing. He'd go an hour every night, you know, and we'd hide from him because he'd party. I mean, he's crazy, man. The Horseman and Arn and those guys and, and uh, uh, Barry Wendell. <laughs> and uh, we'd be staying days in, uh, Red Roof, stuff like that. Rick would pay the guy you know, like Hyatt, the, the shuttle driver, yeah. uh, they'd, they'd give him a hundred bucks to go pick us up, to bring us to the bar. We try to hide from the guy, and, and he's yeah. finding us. He's calling us. And he'd go, "Hey, I'm getting paid, man. You, you guys got to come, okay? I ain't gonna get my money. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting fifty to bring you down. I'm fifty, 50 to bring you back. When to, yeah, he'll twist our arm, you know, so yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, he would do it every night. Man. Wow. He get the bartenders drunk, get the waitresses drunk, get the owner under drunk. Everybody, you know, he's crazy. What's the craziest thing you ever saw Flair do? Well, always pull his pants down. <laughs> he wanted everybody to have a good time. Yeah. He did. He wanted everybody to have a good time. He, he always had a good time. He had always had women, flight attendants, and everything coming. You know, just crazy. 
If, if there was cell phone cameras in those days, he, he wouldn't last very long. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, it's something else.